right. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you another video. So I hope you guys are all doing well and that you're having a great day. We've seen some incredible price action with Cardano ADA. I wanted to share some information regarding the price as well as some fundamental news. Taking a look at this article, Cardano's ADA is now the third largest cryptocurrency by market cap. Could we have seen this be in part of the crypto global investment fund FD7 Ventures selling Bitcoin to increase exposure to Cardano and Polkadot? Also talking about Glow, a DSL for dApp development being implemented on Cardano, as well as Babel fees. Native tokens are going to be issued on the Cardano blockchain with the rollout of the Mary Hard Fork Combinator on March 1st. As far as transaction costs related to native tokens, going into more detail related to Babel fees. And taking a look at a recent development with Kadi and AdaPay, bringing mainstream adoption one step closer for Cardano. So lots of exciting news to talk about here in this video today. All of that coming up right after our sponsor. Our sponsor for today's video is Neon Stake Pool, a low-fee Cardano stake pool run on AWS. They implemented a promotional 0% pool fee until July 1st and 0.75% thereafter. They have just recently updated their website to enclose their Red Cross donation efforts. So if you're looking to support a low fee stake pool that is supporting a humanitarian cause, be sure to delegate to Neon Stake Pool, ticker N-E-O-N. Thank you so much to Neon Stake Pool for sponsoring today's video. So to get things started, we see headlines being made. Cardano ADA making its way through the ranks, now sitting at the top three cryptocurrency by market cap. What an incredible sight to see. Now all of the anticipation for the developments happening with Cardano really starting to take shape and we're seeing that reflected in the price. Currently we are going through a bit of a pullback. It looks like the overall market is doing some cooling off. Right now Cardano sitting at about $1.20. But I think that with all of the developments happening with Cardano, a lot of fundamental drivers behind this move, I think that there is a very bright future ahead for Cardano. Could this also be in part, we see a very interesting development coming from the global crypto investment fund, FD7 Ventures. They have just come out and stated that they are selling off $750 million worth of their Bitcoin holdings over the next 30 days to increase the company's position in Cardano and Polkadot. They had tweeted out that they've been lucky enough to spend lots of time with the brightest minds in crypto and they're willing to bet that each of Ethereum, Cardano, and Polkadot will be more valuable than Bitcoin within the next few years. Prakash Chand, the managing director at FD7 Ventures, saying that projects such as Cardano, Polkadot, and Ethereum are the foundation of the new internet and Web 3.0. So looking at the thought process behind this move, I do have to agree that I don't think that there's going to be one blockchain to rule them all. So I do see the logic behind diversifying that allocation between multiple blockchain 3.0 projects. A lot of people would say that selling off Bitcoin to buy an altcoin might not be the wisest idea, but in this case, larger institutional capital is looking elsewhere for innovation. So could this potentially be the catalyst to cause a cascading effect for larger institutional money to pour into projects like Cardano? Very interesting to think about. Let me know what you all think down in the comment section below. Next up, I wanted to talk about Glow, the very latest Cardano language. Glow is a domain-specific language for dApp development. This is one of the very latest Cardano programming languages. So this is a DSL. This is being implemented by Mutual Knowledge Systems. And what they're doing with this framework, they're creating a domain-specific language that'll allow anyone to write verifiable dApps from a single spec and deploy it in our EVM. So this is something they intend on implementing using the sidechain. They've got the Ethereum virtual machine, which is where the Glow programming language will live. Developers will be able to write verifiably secure dApps using this programming language. So recently we just saw a conversation with the creator of Glow and IOHK. 
A question that was asked during their conversation was, what makes Glow better? So he responded in saying that writing a DAP is the single hardest thing to do in the world. This is because you can't afford a mistake. Any error means a significant loss of user funds. And on top of that, the tools didn't exist to create the more secure DAPs. And we've certainly seen this before in the past. So the power of simplicity and abstraction allows us to do all the reasoning necessary with less attack surface. It is harder to check a million lines of code for a bug, but if you have a thousand lines, then you can make sure it remains safe. So they've really tried to make things as simple as possible, ensuring that they can have the highest degree of certainty. So they want to build on stone and not quicksand. So like everyone else, they started on Ethereum, and he really found the ethos of the Cardano blockchain to resonate with what he was trying to build. As far as the experience for DAP developers, it's going to work currently on the Cardano and the Ethereum blockchain, but in the future, it will work with any blockchain that is sufficiently advanced. That means that you can run your app once and you'll never have to worry about it working on any other platform. So this is very exciting. Currently, they are launching this version of Glow on the EVM. Currently, they are in the DevNet process, so they are testing this. This is not currently ready for full implementation, but Glow can be used to target any smart contract in the EVM network. And that means that Cardano can run any smart contracts written with Glow on the sidechain. So very interesting to see. This is currently still in development, but nonetheless, DAP developers are going to have a whole host of tools to be able to write these provably secure smart contracts when we do see a full Gogan release. The next highly anticipated event we are looking forward to with Cardano is going to be the Merry Hard Fork Combinator. The Merry Hard Fork is intended to bring about native assets on Cardano. A key concept that is being discussed is something along the lines of how are transaction costs going to be denominated in these native tokens. So introducing Babel fees. So there was a presentation during the Cardano 360 event from Professor Agalos Kiyas and he had gone into detail discussing the concept of Babel fees. So they came up with the name Babel fee from the Babel fish. And this is a creature that we saw in the movie, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, essentially being able to hear any language and translate it into your own. So they've carried that same methodology over into how the transaction costs will be translated with native tokens, hence the name Babel fees. So what they've done is they've just outlined in this article, this is on the IOHK blog, going into more detail on the extended UTXO model and how multiple tokens are going to fit inside of things called token bundles, essentially minimizing the amount of transactions that will need to take place on the Cardano ledger to send these native tokens, both fungible and non-fungible. So there's quite a few technical topics that were discussed in this article, but I did want to just present an example to hopefully better explain the term of Babel fees. So a powerful feature of Cardano's EUTXO model is that the fees required for a valid transaction can be predicted precisely prior to posting it. So if we translate that over into this example, we see here that a stake pool operator can publish exchange rates for specific tokens they consider acceptable. So for example, an SPO can declare that they will accept token X for an exchange rate of three to one over ADA. So taking a look at this example presented on this blog post from IOHK, we see that Alice is token holder of token X and she is trying to send a quantity of nine tokens to recipient Bob. And with this transaction, we see it's sent from party A to party B. But what happens under the hood is what's very interesting. So in order to validate this transaction, we have to have an SPO or a validator on the network be able to confirm this transaction. So we see Stacy here as the SPO, and she is able to cover Alice's transaction liability because what she had done was, we see the quantity here of token X is 9.48. This 0.48 of token X is used to cover the transaction fee. Now, if we consider the exchange rate of three to one for token X to ADA, we see that this ADA has converted to token X. So essentially what Stacy did was she covered the transaction fee to send this token X from Alice to Bob by simply converting this, exchanging it, so to speak, from token X to ADA. So she was able to cover that liability transaction from the sender to the receiver in exchange for token X. 
And if we look at the output for the transaction, we see that the receiver, or Bob, ended up with nine of token X. And we see that Stacy, the stake pool operator, covered two of the transaction fees required to send this transaction. We see here that the 0.16 implied at this point in time and at this point in time were incurred by Stacy in exchange for the three to one exchange rate for token X. So under the hood, the end user will be able to use their native tokens to send the transaction fee from the sender to the receiver. But what's happening really is that the SPO or the validator on the network is forming almost sort of an arbitrage where they're able to accept or not accept any specific token and they're able to present that exchange at an exchange rate that is up to their discretion. So Babel fees are a very interesting concept. Taking a look at some more details, this process is entirely opt-in for stake pool operators. So they can choose essentially which tokens they would like to accept transactions for to validate on the network. Moreover, there is no need for an agreement between SPOs about the value of a specific token. So it's completely up to the stake pool operator or the validator on the network to offer the amount of token corresponding to either the minimum, the average, or the maximum of the posted exchange rate. So it's completely up to the stake pool operator. I think that this is a very interesting concept to think about because it's going to form almost a sort of arbitrage model for these stake pool operators. And the ones who are very entrepreneurial will try to accept as many tokens as possible and offer competitive rates to be able to have more transactions get validated. So a lot of technical stuff, it's very high level. So Babel fees empower users to price transactions in any token supported natively by the system. So very cool to think about. I think that with the extended UTXO model that has been adopted by Cardano, really bringing about a lot of cool use and utility and a lot of features that can be implemented on Cardano that we don't necessarily see with other blockchain protocols. And last up, for those of you all who have stayed till the very end, a weekly update we see from Kadi. So Kadi is a very interesting project that is teaming up with the Cardano Foundation to implement something called Ada Pay. So this is a big step as it comes to bringing about mainstream adoption and more use and utility for the Cardano ecosystem. So their plans are that all features from the Shelly mainnet, such as staking, will be available for A to pay users. Let's take a look at a quick video just to get an idea of what Kadi is building with A to pay. Taking a look at more detail on AdaPay, so AdaPay is a payment gateway designed by Kadi on the Cardano network, allowing merchants to accept Ada as a form of payment. With this collaboration, the merchant can choose to hold onto the ADA or convert it to 35 different global currencies. All payments are made on-chain on Cardano and are going to lead to the increased growth of Kadi and the Cardano blockchain as buyers and merchants are more easily able to use Ada as payments. So lots of exciting developments coming from Cardano. Very interesting and exciting to see what the future holds for Cardano. All right, everyone, that is what I have for you all here in this video today. I really do hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it valuable and informative. If you did, please be sure to drop a like for me. And if you wanna stay up to date with all the relevant Cardano news and educational content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, everyone, thank you all so much again for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.